Monster Hunter World is an amazing online action RPG that has received universal acclaim and rave reviews across the gaming community. It's said to have the classic Monster Hunter feel veterans of the series love, but is also easily accessible to newcomers. There are customizable characters, dozens of hours of content, and free DLC to boot. So, everything is great, right? Time to go home and play some Monster Hunter World. No! Despite being an incredibly fun experience, no game, no matter how award-winning or exalted in the annals of gaming history, is without its frustrating qualities. With that in mind, this is the top 10 annoying things in Monster Hunter World. Now wait, wait just a second. Before you smash the dislike button, let me just say, I am in no way suggesting that Capcom needs to change any of these things, aggravating as they can be. They are simply things that we at Vast Ice Gaming feel are the most irksome features in the game. Also, this is the first and only Monster Hunter game I've played, so things about the series that seem normal to veterans are not so normal to me, and this is just my opinion. And so, without further ado... Number 10. Only Two Traps. This really isn't that big a deal, which is why it's number 10. However, I'm a little disappointed that the only traps you get are shock traps and pitfall traps. Now, I'm not saying that what we have isn't sufficient to do the job, but it would be fun to have a bit more trap variety. As a D&D player, I've encountered tons of different traps, and the possibilities are almost endless. It would be cool to have traps specifically designed to ensnare flying enemies. Freeze traps you can use in water, grease traps you can place on slopes, and concussion traps you can use in narrow spaces would all make fine additions. Number 9. Losing your palico. If you're anything like me, you've grown attached to your palico while playing through the story. They're a boon companion, coming through in tight situations, and giving you much needed support while on the hunt. Imagine the shock the very first time you ever participate in a three or four person hunt and realize your palico is nowhere to be found. Obviously with three or four people even strong monsters shouldn't be much of an issue, but palicos provide unique types of utility such as the plunder blade. Additionally, if your teammates end up being less than stellar, you will certainly wish you still had your palico with you to back you up. It would be nice if at least the party leader's palico stuck around, but if that were the case, I imagine most people would refuse to join hunts unless they were the party leader, which would cause its own set of problems. Still, I really miss my palico when he's not around. Number 8. Jewel RNG. For the uninitiated, RNG stands for Random Number Generator, which relates to the rate at which a particular item is dropped from a monster. In this particular case, it refers to the frequency of decorations awarded at the end of quests. Now, I don't have much of an issue with the actual rate of drops. My gripe is being unable to farm for a particular jewel, and having it left entirely up to luck. In most other games, monsters have a list of specific things they drop, and the frequency at which they drop them. That way, if you want a particular drop, you can grind that monster until you get what you want. To be fair, this occurs in Monster Hunter World, but only for monster parts. It would be nice if you could reliably hunt a specific monster to receive a specific jewel, or even a predetermined set of jewels. Number 7. Pouch Problems I'm one of those players that likes to pick up everything they come across when they first start playing a game, in the event I may need something for crafting or trading. However, between carrying necessary supplies and feverish gathering, you can quickly run out of space. This would be more tolerable if you could do targeted gathering of items you really need, but the stacks for mushrooms, bugs, and herbs are capped at 10. So if you want to stay out in the wild stocking up on reagents for healing items or traps, you'll have to make regular stops at your tent to empty your pockets. It would be useful to have a system of transferring items from your pouch directly to your item box, like letting your palico make delivery runs to camp while you continue gathering. Having a way to gradually expand your item pouch capacity would be a good way to handle it, and would add hours of gameplay. 
Number six, runaway monsters. Now we're starting to cross into the more serious aggravations. I cannot tell you how many times I've been hunting a monster during an expedition, kicking their scaly butt up one side of the zone and down the other, getting them to death's door when they escape at warp speed and leave the area. An entire effort of time and resources has been wasted. Now, I understand the balance issue in having monsters escape. Letting the player be fainted dozens of times while whittling down the monster's life is a recipe for tedium. However, when a monster has been sufficiently thrashed, there should be a threshold at which they can no longer escape. Number 5. Monster Roars Annoying doesn't begin to cover this one. Monsters roar when they're aggroed. Fine. Roaring causes you to pause for a couple seconds and cover your ears. Not thrilled about it, but I get it. Roaring cancels any and all actions currently being performed by your hunter. Not cool. Roaring has caused me to lose half the benefit of a potion I was in the middle of drinking, take massive hits from other monsters while completely defenseless, and even fall straight to the ground while in the middle of a jump attack. Occasionally, a turf war will break out and the monsters will roar at each other continuously, keeping my hunter in a state of perpetual stasis. Situations like these give me sufficient time to get a drink, take a nap, and calculate the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow. Now yes, you can use a combination of equipment, decorations, and charms to negate the effect of roars, but in order to make yourself completely impervious to them, you need five levels in the skill, representing a significant investment of your gear economy. To reference D&D again, the need for the earmuffs skill just feels like a feat tax. Number four, arena challenges. I'm sure there will be mixed opinions about this, but I find the arena challenges remarkably broken in favor of the monsters. And yes, I'm aware the monsters here are scaled for multiplayer, but that's not really my gripe. The problem is being forced to choose from among five sets of predetermined trash gear that have skill combinations that no one in their right mind would use. It doesn't help that you stand a very good chance of there not being a gear set containing your favorite weapon, potentially forcing you to use a weapon you're completely unfamiliar with. I understand wanting to provide a challenge, but there are literally dozens of other ways to create challenge without handicapping the player with disjointed armor sets with unhelpful skills. Number 3. Getting Stuck in Weapon Animations we're getting close to the top of the list here, and for a time, this entry was number one before getting further into the game. Few things are as infuriating as attempting to unleash a devastating combo on a monster, only to have that monster move and have you become stuck flailing haplessly at the air in an interminable attack animation for its entire duration. Now, you're no more vulnerable here than you would be normally, but this even occurs fairly often against sleeping monsters. Frequently, I chase a wounded monster back to its nest and find it sleeping, which would seem like the perfect time for a combo attack. However, when the first hit lands, monsters often spring awake and jump backwards, leaving me to attack nothing but the air in front of me. It would really be nice if you could dodge cancel your combos, like I've seen in numerous other games, or at least change the direction you're facing. Number 2. Kirin. Ah, every hunter's favorite electrical unicorn, known here at Vast Ice Gaming as a thoroughbred pain in the neck. Now before I tear into this equine elder dragon, let me start out by saying that I like the monster itself. I love how majestic looking it is with its blue coloration, and it reminds me of Ixion from Final Fantasy X. That said, he is a royal nuisance when it comes to fighting him. Trying to stand in front of him to hit him will get you trampled or struck with lightning. Standing behind him to hit him will get you donkey kicked 15 feet into the air. Standing anywhere around him to hit him can also get you struck by lightning. When enraged, he cloaks himself in lightning, which significantly reduces your attack damage. Added to this is the fact that his face is his only weak spot, which can be difficult to hit with certain weapons, not to mention the fact that he constantly jumps around making the likelihood of landing a combo almost non-existent. Also, just running around can get you struck by lightning. There is a brief, 
and I mean brief flash on the ground where the bolt will hit. But by the time your brain has registered its existence, it's too late! You're on the receiving end of a gigavolt. And the most annoying thing in Monster Hunter World is... Number one, co-op setup. This might be a surprise to some people given the other things listed. However, it's a prevailing issue and unlike most of the other entries, there's no real way to get around it or get better at it. On the surface, it may not seem that bad. You can post a quest, and other people can join, so long as you haven't set it up otherwise. When everyone's ready, you can depart, or some can depart while others catch up. The problems arise, however, when you want to go on an expedition with friends. The only way to party up on an expedition is to have one person leave and fire an SOS flare, which hopefully will be answered only by the people you want to see it. It can be irritating when an opportunistic party seeker jumps into your expedition before your friend it's also disappointing that you can't co-op story quests in a straightforward and aggravation-free manner. In other MMORPG games, you can make a party with other players and remain in the party for as long as you choose. This is not the case in Monster Hunter World, and while the multiplayer waters are by no means impossible to navigate, they're anything but intuitive. So there you have it. There are other features of the game that I find less than stellar, but I had to draw the line somewhere, and top 10 lists are all the rage. So whether you agree or disagree with some or all of my points, I hope you've at least enjoyed this video. Are there aspects of any of these things I've overlooked? Please tell me in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.